Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Line Place of Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. We are at 26 wins. 26 rins? That's like if you go to the dentist 26 times and they're like, Hey, put this cup in your mouth and swirl it around. Don't uh, spit it out until this alarm goes off. 2PWKKE46. Torn Photo, Book of Revelations. Decent starting stats, maybe even good starting stats. You know how my scale goes. Decent, good, pretty good, great, pretty great, eh, half decent, and then amazing. 10 out of 10. Uh, we're actually in an amazing position here, and I know I said pretty good a couple of times there, but as long as we can survive the first floor, preferably taking no damage, we should have enough HP to not be, you know, intensely concerned about things. Torn Photo is an amazing starting item. Uh, and the fact that we got Torn Photo combined with what appears to be not the lowest damage plausible to get on your stat screen, although the stat screen, you know, cannot be trusted, of course, um, is, is extremely positive as well. It looks like there might be a library, and by might be, I mean, like, definitely is a library on this floor. I don't think that it's possible we'll encounter a book that we care about more than Book of, uh, Revelations here early. Just because getting one level cube of meat is also valuable as well, but it, it would really have to be Satanic Bible, but we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, as long as we can get to maybe like 5 HP, I think we're in a great spot. And that is definitely going to help. A health upgrade that may actually be a health downgrade, um, but still, rolling ridiculously right now. If we'd started with this amount of HP, we would have been like, come on, this is just doing it on easy mode now. So one bomb opens up... Uh, Ability to get a few more consumables there. First things first, though. Go to our item room. And actually, you know what? This would be a great time to get either 10 bombs or a 5 bomb upgrade plus whatever synergy they could give us. Ooh, instead it's Strange Attractor. That is, uh, it's not even a divisive item. I think people are genuinely, or generally, in agreement that this item is actually really dangerous. So why take it? Because the Canadianness within me tells me that I should feel bad about the fact that I've gotten such a good seed here to start with. So I should try to make it more difficult on myself. And you know, I think, although it might seem like that's uh, a bullshit attitude to take, I'm just going to head down to the next floor here. Although, we don't have a key anyway. Um, although that may seem like a bullshit attitude to take, I think that it helps you, you know, maintain your skill. It's like working out. You know, if you just constantly do exactly the same workout, it's better than doing nothing. No disputing that. However, is it the most effective use of your time? I would say the answer to that question is possibly no. I do have to check my audio settings again. I tested this video before, and I was like, the audio sounds good, but I'm looking at my desktop audio settings, and I'm saying to myself, self, I don't think that's right. Ooh, we did find like a... A black market there. Okay, one second. Is this better? Oh, yeah, that's the ticket right there. Okay. I can tell just by the audio levels that's correct. Dad's key, huh? I'll tell you what. We will do so. Not just because it's zany, and not just because the rest of this run is pretty good, minus Strange Attractor, but also because we do have no keys right now. So there is a... Unincentive. Now we have one key, but still. We also found our secret room here. Dad's key is not without merit on its own merits. Uh, I will say that X-ray vision doesn't necessarily make me feel better about taking Dad's key, because it does some stuff that Dad's key would do already, but I guess it's better than, you know, it's better to have some redundancy. Let's put it that way. Traded a bomb for a key and a penny, which is acceptable, and there's our second secret room. As long as we get, like, a decent deal with the devil here, and obviously something like Brimstone is, uh... Ooh, that's dangerous. Is a huge get. Because we uh, get the value out of Strange Attractor, you know, sucking enemies in without the danger associated with it. So Algiz is fine. Bad Trip is not that bad right now. We got an Awaz rune. That does not matter. Yera and Perthro. Well, I think you Perthro the deal with the devil on this floor in the hopes of getting something... Um, extremely valuable, then you come back and grab Yera. And it is definitely worth the backtrack. Red Candle. We can't really take another spacebar item right now. It nullifies the, uh, whole point of us being here. One makes you larger is not too bad. 
And no Tinted Rock. I would really love Small Rock. Anything that gives us more damage, of course, valuable here. But let's, um... Oh, there is a Tinted Rock. Fantastic. Um, let's just place our bomb here and see how Larry Jr. feels about it. Didn't get him, but we did get a bomb back and a Spirit Heart as well. This deal with the Devil is important. I would love to get, like, Guppy's Head and a passive and then re-roll Guppy's Head. You know, get that Guppy item and then continue to move on. So we'll take the Halo. Quite good. Hmm... Weird one. I think you say that... It, it's weird because you can take Demon Baby and then take 9 lives and it doesn't cost you anything. But I think I'd rather take 9 lives and then reroll Demon Baby. Even though we'll have to pay for the other item, I think it's worth it to try to get a better item out of it. And I, I think that that is good. We can afford to be a little lower on HP because of the fact that we uh, do have 9 lives now, so being at 5.5 Spirit Arts doesn't bother me very much. And we knew we were going to use Yera if the, you know, if the opportunity presented itself, because we wanted to take the, uh, or we were going to use Perthra, I should say, because we wanted to take Yera with us. So, yeah, we're two-thirds of the way to becoming Guppy. I think that's well worth it. Are we in a slightly riskier situation than previous? Yeah, I think that's also probably fair to say. Um, but... It's risk-reward here. I hope it's risk-reward, at least. And I think we're definitely better off with two guppy items um, right now. Yeah, we'll take Karma. Definitely better off with, or probably better off with two guppy items than we are with nine lives, one HP instead of zero. And, um, and Demon Baby. Demon Baby, not bad, but, but not as good as getting one-third closer to guppy, I think. We have found our second secret room. I mean, maybe we should just go straight into this deal with the devil. By the, oh, that was bad. By the way, don't let me try to... It, it's not like I'm trying to misrepresent the run like this. I'm not trying to say this is like a difficult run and I'm making some incredibly, you know, ingenious Mikhail Tall-esque, uh, you know, tactical decisions or ruminations or anything like that. Rather, it's just some runs are on a very linear track. This run is a little bit more... Um, it, it's got variance. If you know what I mean. And we could get blank card Yera. Uh, I, I kind of prefer just a straight up dad's key roll, so let's go for that. And we definitely don't need pay to play because we have dad's key. So if we're using dad's key, effectively pay to play should be a, a downgrade for us. Several pills, some of which we will know about. Are you a wizard is very bad. Infested is fine. Range up is okay. Relax makes no difference. And I found pills. All right, so that was uh, a bit of a wash there. I still say we fight the boss, and actually we're really lucky that it's Gertie. Because... I can use Cube of Meat, aka Ball of Bandages, to do a lot of damage to Gertie, in spite of the fact that we're not doing that much damage. And... We have Are You a Wizard, so... Having an Orbital here is very nice, not having to deal with an enemy that's moving around all the time. Screw. Obviously, a little disappointed, hoping for a little bit of guppy action there, but so be it. We're way ahead of schedule right now, and uh, anything that ups our DPS is is extremely positive. You know, I'd, in particular, I'd really like more damage, because damage... Um, let, let me put it this way. It's kind of hard to explain. Walk with me as we go through this. It's not really a metaphor, but the more we shoot, the more we affect... The gravitational field or the magnetic field that enemies are affected by thanks to Strange Attractor. So I don't want like Eve's Mascara, we fire one shot every, you know, 15 minutes sort of deal. But I would really like to have it so minor enemies get killed in one or two hits. Upping our DPS by raising our rate of fire is also fine. It's better than, you know, not raising our DPS. But I would rather raise our DPS without having to possibly put more variance into the system right now, if that makes sense. So Degas was, you know, nice here for if, for no other reason than peace of mind. And we'll just pop that right away. We've already found our secret room, so are we done with this floor? I think that's a, a conceivable, proper approach here. Oh, you idiot. I walked out of the room. But you know what? I turned that non-champion, or I turned that champion into a non-champion. May actually be a bad thing if he was going to give us a consumable or something, but get blood rights, which is just, like, not worth anything at all. Okay. Uh, I think we just leave. You know, no, we don't. Because, uh, I mean, there's already... we. Okay, it didn't really matter whether we did or we didn't. But what I was thinking is, you know, there is a mob trap room. Maybe we could still come across a boss trap room. But then I was like, has there ever been a mob trap room and a boss trap room on the same floor? And then I was like, 
Have you ever had sex with a pharaoh? I put the pussy in a sarcophagus, and I was like, okay, well now you're going down this weird Kanyeism tangent line. You're not even thinking about the game anymore. It's a very strange situation. It should be basically illegal to have a mob trap room that has just a single regular chest in it. Like, is that really what we want to be, you know, the, the message we want to be sending to the nation's youth is, uh, yeah, go do the mob trap room. It's like, uh, take a minimum wage job as a brain surgeon. You know, if you really love it, you should do it and not worry about the amount of stress involved. You should be in it for the love of the game. And I mean, there is some validity to that, I suppose. But at the same time, you know, you're taking on a couple hundred grand in student debt to become a neurosurgeon. They want you to work for minimum wage. I don't think so. We are going to take the left hand because we're only one guppy item away. Um, we're going to keep Yera. But we're gonna use death on this room. And that was lovely. I had a fantastic time. Would definitely recommend that course of action to friends and family. If I ate at that situation on Yelp, I would probably give it a four. And I would say, you know, I mean... I feel like a four is a, is a bad review. You gotta, like, justify it. Why not just give it a five? Well, it's not one of, like, the best meals I've had this year. It's good, and I would do it again, but I can't give it a five, but then... When you look at a restaurant review, like if you're on... I know Yelp, by the way, is like, pay to play. But, if you, uh, if you go on Yelp, what's like the bare minimum review for a restaurant? Or aggregate review score for a restaurant you'll go to? For me, it's like, if it's under a three, there's no chance. So by giving it a four, you're not even helping it out that much, but then it's like a matter of principle. You're like... You know, do I want to be one of the people who rates things honestly, or do I want to be one of the people who's like, you know, the current rating for this restaurant is a 3.1, but I think it's worthy of a 3.3, so I'm going to give it a 5 to get it there. I think, I believe in the power of the aggregate review system if everybody reviews honestly. So I'm, you know what, you're getting a 4 and you, you're also getting my business in the future as long as you maintain your level of service cleanliness and also, um, you know, level of taste. Anyway, what the fuck am I talking about? What I'm talking about is basically bullshit until we get to this boss fight and hopefully get a deal with the devil and we use this deal with the devil to ensure ourselves a third guppy piece. Yo, stop firing. This guy is not firmly connected to the substrate and is approaching us at an alarming rate. On Till our cells simply cannot hold all our insides in, and that's when we explode. Okay, there we go. Uh, that's the perfect attack. Deal with the devil. Squeezy's nice for the HP and the tears upgrade, although we've talked about that before. You definitely take both here. Start with that one so you get an extra half spirit heart out of it. And we're at three spirit or uh, three demon hearts, but we can fly. And we definitely still need to go to our item room on this floor. Now that, I mean, it's a little bit of a bummer. I didn't necessarily expect to get a deal. Oh, why even just not use a key there? But anyway, uh, I didn't necessarily expect to get a deal with the devil there. But at the same time, I was hopeful that it would be a guppy item. And um, the fact that we didn't get a guppy item is bad. I know this is a waste of two keys, but who cares? Oh, okay, we're going to reroll our whole run then. Um, we, we will lose dad's key in the process, but... I think that I valued the zaniness on one reroll more than Dad's key. We're no longer flying. We do have Holy Mantle, 8 inch nails, and everything I've said on this run so far now no longer exists. We have Libra and the Ankh. Strange. Uh, not that they synergize with one another, but Libra is a, is a weird choice here for sure. But this run is still good, and I, I actually quite like Libra as an item. I uh, sure, let's take blue map. And we might as well, we lost Yara, so we might as well take Judgment and maybe get a deal with the devil on the next floor. Um, but still, we exist in the same situation from a guppy perspective. And my, my situation there is we probably won't get a deal with the devil on this floor, although it's possible. Um, and if we do, there's a good chance that it's Krampus, which means that we're probably a few floors away from having a really good lead on a guppy situation. So... The good news is we have left hand, so we're insulated from that to some extent, but, you know, we, we got work to do uh, if we want to become Guppy. We should definitely be checking out all the uh, all the special rooms that could have red chests with uh, the left hand here, but any all stats upgrade or, or any 
Any stat that upgrades... Let me rephrase this. Any item that upgrades any stat... Let me rephrase this. Any damsel that's in distress... Be out of that dress when she meets Jim West. But let me rephrase that. Any item that upgrades any stat is going to be an all stats upgrade for us because of Libra. And you can get some really weird synergies like that with, um, like, Taurus, for example. Like, this is all stats upgrade. Um, but uh, Taurus, for example, is a, an all stats downgrade first. And then as time progresses on every single room, you get a small all stats upgrade, like, every tick or every second. Um, and then, at the end of the room, it resets and you go back down to it being like a net all stats downgrade. It's very strange. I think it's good, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, really. It's interesting, at least, and I appreciate that. Um, but this run is still, like, relatively firmly in, in a win category, for sure. Um, we are mildly ahead of schedule for boss rush. Holy Mantle, obviously, is, is one reason that I can't be like, oh, this run sucks, you know? Holy Mantle, at the worst of times, is still great. And uh, Holy Mantle plus anything that does damage, like even Gemini. Obviously, Sack Dagger is like the king of that. Or, you know, even Cuba Meatball of Bandages, which we unfortunately re-rolled. But um, it, it's worth it because we can get close to enemies without having to worry that, you know, we're going to take damage every single time. Even if we get hit once per room, it's, it's irrelevant. Um, that bomb was slightly askew. I slightly dispute that, but... Sure, why not? No arcade is likely to be on this floor. Definitely BFF. Definitely Mom's Purse. Let's check this out. And a teleport card would be huge. Wow, okay. Shop was pretty much 100% uh, set. Steam sale with two activi- or two, uh, you know, full items that we wanted. Uh, a spirit heart and then also the card ended up enabling us to teleport out of boss rush. So that is extremely good. I'm still holding out hope. Every light in the house is on. In the hopes that we can get this guppy dream completed here. Because remember, every attribute up is all attributes up. And every attribute up is all attributes up, is damage up, is multiplied by the damage that flies do. So, I'll settle for the mulligan if I have to, but... You know, I'm working through the process in my head right now. I'm drawing the data flow diagram, and the data flow diagram says, get flies. For now, we're just going to get little gish. It's okay. I'm not going to sweat it. Being able to slow enemies is going to be nice, especially, again, because we do have, uh, you know, Gemini doing some damage here. I'm probably overstating how useful Gemini is, but I think there's something to it. Now, just keep these guys away. I hate this room. I hate this enemy type in general, but... There we go. Guppy. Ooh, I told you. What did I tell you? <laughs> Can't get in there yet, but we have uh, a good chance at finding an arcade. Don't really care about the money. Um, I've got enough to donate and feel good about it. Uh, if we... Well, really, we should feel good if we donate at all. You know how many people out there don't? I mean, I'm not saying I'm a... I'm a philanthropist or anything like that, but when we go to Whole Foods and we bring our own bags, they say, do you want to donate your 10 cents to uh, our charity? I say, well, you know what? If you're going to twist my arm, go for it. So, this year, just passively, I've donated at least 40 or 50 cents to charity. And, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I mean, it's not like anyone's ever going to recognize you for doing it, even though it is like a marked impact on your actual life, but... You know, it's just, it feels good inside to know that you're being humble about it and, and to help people in need. In all seriousness, though, that, like, I'm a saint. No, but in all seriousness, it's, it's nice. I like these passive donation options. You know, it adds up. You wouldn't have thought about it before. If your bill was 10 cents larger, you would have been like, where did that 10 cents come from? I don't think so. Anything, uh, anything helps, for sure. Now, if we... Oh, we do have an arcade. And we do have uh, the time, I think, to go to that mob trap room. Do, you know what? No. We're still on D100, you know, exemption. And I really like, actually, the arrangement that we've created. We can take that. I like the arrangement that we've created that is... We'll still reroll our whole run. I think rerolling your whole run is very fun. But I'm not interested any longer in just grinding that D100, you know... Grinding it down to a fine pace, if you know what I mean. We 
always or 99.9% .9 of the time will win with the D100 and it, it kind of subverts the commentary on the run in a way that I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, we've got to check this. So, you know, we'll, we'll re-roll our whole run with some exceptions. I think once per run is unassailable. You have to go for it. Missing though, you have to go for it. D100, a little too distracting and too samey. Like, as much, like the, the full run reroll is actually probably my favorite mechanic that's been added to the Isaac series. I really love how it can completely change things up and put you on your back foot, keep it zany. But there's just too many items that do exactly the same thing. Like, no one of those items is exceptionally likely to show up, but the fact that there's the D4, the D100, a one room and a six room is just like, you know, it, it makes it so, it, it's so novel, but it's not special anymore, you know? But we've, we've talked about that ad nauseum. I know some people miss the D100 zaniness. I think it's kind of manufactured zaniness, but that's, that's still zany, probably. I don't know. We're talking in hypotheticals right now, basically. We're arguing semantics. She's trading in her Ferrari for a 94 Chrysler LeBaire. I don't remember the lyrics to short skirt, long jacket. Except for, you know, like, there's eight or nine words that are pretty clear. Okay. Are we going to be able to kill mom in time to get into boss rush? Yeah, probably. Um, I don't know. But you know what? Donating's important as well. Let's bounce from there. I was gonna say, there's probably one more room. It is a little bit on the longer side, probably. I think we throw a bomb down, and we do so so we can stand in the fire. And I did lose Holy Mantle there. But standing inside of the fire is going to make this possible, I think. Totally worked. Master plan. Alright, get the Polaroid. Get something here. Undefined. Piggy Bank. Magnet. Mini Mush. Shit, dude. I guess you go undefined. Um, it doesn't give you looping anymore, but I think it's still pretty good. In fact, now that we've stopped using this item, I've forgotten what it does. Teleports you to a random secret room, right? So this should actually speed up the rest of the run. Not that I'm looking to just finish it as soon as possible, but, you know, there's no reason to do those filler rooms on the womb if we don't have to. Um, and, of course, the deal with the devil at this point to become guppy gives us, you know, pretty much a win. Wow, Curse of the Labyrinth. So we have... Okay. Um, all right, so I fucked it. This is a weird one. As a result of this, unless we get a battery charge drop, which is the whole reason I'm still fighting these guys. By the way, Epiphora, I'm pretty sure as long as we fire in the same direction, because of Libra, it's an all-stats upgrade. Um, but as a result of this, we will be going down to Shoal. And going down to Shoal means that this run is going to end on the regular Satan fight, which is very strange. I don't know if there's much I could have done about this, but I'll tell you what, we'll we'll take a look around on this floor. First off, it's nice to be on Shoal. You know, it's been a while. It's been since, you know, probably since we stopped doing dailies, I guess. Ooh! Ah, oh, that was real bad. Um, but... We could still play a self-sacrifice room and get to... Uh... Get to the, the final area that is not the chest. Dark room. So I think I will try that if there is a self sacrifice room available. Is that a huge risk? Yeah, it's actually like a, a completely needless, enormous risk. But I feel bad that, you know, accidentally I just cut out like three floors of the game. I cut out the chest and I cut out pretty much all of the womb one and the womb two. That being said, there's there's really no way I could have known that it would have gone down like this. This will still count as a win regardless. If you're one of those people in the comments, oh, looks like the streak's over. Yo, the streak is not over due to this. It's like saying, you know, if you've won 10 NBA games in a row, and then, you know, the stadium collapses in the midst of one of the games, there goes the end of the streak. These are um, extenuating circumstances, okay? I'm content with counting this as a zero, if you're going to be extraordinarily pedantic about it, but I'm definitely not counting it as a minus one. Unless we die, in which case, then, for sure, it's like a minus 100. 
Uh, what makes you larger? I'm not going to take. We have Holy Mantle, so we'll just escape from here. The Fool. The Tower. I guess the Fool. Um, still exploring. Very much on the lookout for a self-sacrifice room. If we just have to beat Satan, that's fine. We'll do that. Um, still hoping for the world's, you know, most laid-back guppy dream here. Don't sweat it. Take as long as you need. I will say, I, t I think our run actually sort of sucks now. I'm really incentivized to keep firing in the same direction. Like, if I, if I switch directions, I get so much... Uh, penalty because I get an all stats downgrade that will come back to being like an all stats upgrade eventually but still Epiphora is either like really great or absolutely awful depending on your perspective uh, when you have Libra if you don't have Libra I'm pretty sure that it's just like a net positive like ad infinitum but it might even and, and I appreciate it for its novelty in this sense it might even be better to shoot in the wrong direction, like in a direction that doesn't hit an enemy, just to keep your other stats high and then maneuver yourself into a position where you can hit again. But I might be overthinking it. Or I might be severely underthinking it. There's several plausible options here. Um, I hate this enemy, who apparently uh, gets an enormous shot speed buff when we have a shot speed buff. So we got our second steam sale. It means if somehow we could work our way backwards and get to the hush fight, we would actually get every item for free. But we have 60 cents, so we're pretty much getting every item for free to begin with. Battery charge. Might as well. Might as well. Uh, Guppy, please. All right, two spirit hearts, very valuable if we choose to go to our uh, self-sacrifice room, if there even is a uh, self-sacrifice room. That's what I get for trying to be zany. Be zany, they said. Okay, I think we crack this and then... Oh, we, we can't even crack that. Well, you should use this... One thing I remember I was going to say. Use this every time it's available. So we get the magic 8-ball. And I actually have no idea what happens now. I'm assuming we just go back to Shoal? No, this is the dark room for sure. Okay, well that's cool. At least we made it all the way down. Now to become Guppy would be nice. I'm going to predict top right chest this time for Guppy. Let's make it happen. Two for two? No. no. No, 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 Okay. Well, now I don't feel bad. At, at first I was like, ah, we kind of fucked up the run by not remembering undefined synergies. But uh, now I'm like, we've created a zany situation and accidentally gone down to the dark room. That's kind of cool. I'm for it, at least. Um, this run actually is bad, by the way. It's, it's fun bad. At least it's not just like, you know, we've got bad damage. It's just unusual, which is not necessarily the kiss of death, you know, it's fun nonetheless. Um, and this Epiphora Libra nonsense is very silly in a way that I can get behind, but thank God we have Holy Mantles, all I'm saying about that. Joker, absolutely. Uh, I would very much be interested in Lump of Coal. Let me guess, another Joker card? It's the perfect synergy right now. Yep, there you go. Might have gotten the guppy prediction wrong, but I got the second Joker card. I'm trying to just fire in the same f fucking direction here because it does so much more damage and keeps our speed high. There we go. Lump of Coal is pretty good. I don't really want to teleport because we could be right next to the boss fight, but I'll tell you what, I'll teleport. If we're going to have to do these rooms basically anyway, might as well try to get an error room. I don't know. We can't get an error room on this floor now, right? That that was the that's the reason that uh, undefined kind of sucks now. There's no ability to get a uh, an error room on the the dark room of the chest. Okay, I'm remembering now. I'm remembering the source of my indignation. Like I'm, I mean, it should be pretty clear to you that I'm displeased with. Oh, that was really dumb. I'm displeased with the strength of this run, just based on the fact that you know. Look at how long it took us to kill those enemies. By the way, I believe that it's like Taurus, and your uh, your charge for Epiphora actually resets room to room. But if it doesn't, I will just continue to fire left for the remainder of my natural life here. Even against these guys, because it does give me a speed upgrade. Ooh. 
A little dicey. It does, like, meaningfully improve your stats. No kidding there. Now, it would be really nice to not die... Uh, on the lamb fight. We do have ten lives, and one of them has several spirit hearts le on it because of the onk, right? But... Still very much not worth it because it would scare the Christ out of me. Now, unfortunately, I think we're going to have to shoot to the right now. We've not taken damage on the fight thus far. Ooh, that was a very lucky miss, I think. Just keep firing to the right as long as is possible. That's okay. Ideal. Ideal. We got super slow. Epiphora resets when you get hit. How did we hit that enemy? I'm <laughs> slightly confused. It looks like we're going to win. This was a strange run that, if I'm being honest, I'm happy to have had, but I'm happy to get rid of as well. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.